This is lucky. It really, it really all starts kind of, we believe, back here. Uh, this used to be the Montecito Bungalow Court back in 1926, after Chaplin and Arbuckle uh, completed as their lead investment with the Montecito Inn next door. The success of that then gave birth to the Montecito Bungalows next door, where it's over here and that's over on Pacific Coast Highway. Sometime in those bungalows, we believe that there was a young, a young child, maybe five years old, who passed away in this area, in this area here, because where we feel it most strongly. Now when you think about it, for example, I'm Charlie Chaplin. I just died. I'm a ghost. Time has become space. Things are very different. I'm getting oriented. Where am I going to hang out? Some place that Fatty Arbuckle and I built, or Vevey, Switzerland? I'm going to be living in Vevey, hanging out with my family. So why do you get a ghost named Charlie here? Well, when it's dead, when you're dead, Things are very different. Like for us, we have to enchant the world of art to us. You gotta pull down that painting. You gotta fight for that line that you can write on. You gotta channel that great performance. For the dead, it's the opposite. We are their books. They read our thoughts about them. When they pick up the way we are perceiving them, they define themselves by it. Thus, the attraction of loved ones for loved ones. Well, you get this kid, he obviously died all alone, we believe. He's very unhappy, he doesn't know what's going on. Everybody's thinking about Chaplin. So he starts to identify. He starts to pick up on their feelings of Chaplin. He starts to be Charlie Chaplin, and therefore you get the ghost we call Charlie. Okay. Now, it be very clear to the audience out there that the ghost we call Charlie never really interacts with the customers, but really interacts with the people who work here, because we're here all the time, we're here alone. I can tell you if you start following me some of the places where where Charlie starts to show up. It's a pretty simple action. The fact is, I've got fingers. How do you do that when you have no fingers? I don't get how ghosts move things, but they do. Yeah. Another thing that happens back in this area, there's no end of trouble with the bathrooms. The light switch uh -huh. to this to this whole area of the restaurant is very far over there. It's a very heavy switch. You really have to click, yeah. clack it down. Yeah. How many times have I been back here using the restroom facilities at the end of the night? Finally get my private moment, and my private moment because it's very private, because I got no light, because right. Charlie turned the lights off on me again. Usually the warning is when... While you're in there. Well, yeah, usually the warning is the lock starts to go back and forth, even though there's nobody in there with me. Then the lights go off. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How often does that happen? Oh, uh, two, three times a month. Wow. And I'll tell you when I usually know it's going to happen. If you like, if you like to follow me over yeah. back to here, where again, where it starts. This is why I, myself, and other people, we kind of put the story together between all of us. I've been working in this building for 12 years of my life. I'll make that 13 years now. Blow out all the candles in this room. This one comes back on when you're not looking, mm. and there's nobody else here. We call it Gar uh, Charlie's Ghost Light. And if I'm here alone, and I've blown out all the candles, and this one comes back on, I know I'm in for it that night. Mm -hmm. But again, i got to stress, there's nothing malicious mm -hmm. or mean. There's just something playful and, and just it's, fun. Yeah, actually. letting you it's, know that there's, they're here. It's, it's, it's here. playful and fun. That's why we really think it was a five-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, and we believe it was a boy. We can't tell you why, but it's between all of us getting the sense of it. But I know I mentioned something to y'all before that I'll mention it to me was the most amazing thing. I've been in this business 35 years. I have very steady hands. I have a good sense of balance. I can run full speed with a full coffee cup and not spill it. Huh. And I don't want to because, you know, I want to drink that stuff because I yeah, work yeah, long hours. Yeah. One time I was with Gary Lieberthal. And Gary, hope you don't mind me mentioning your name. He used to be the head of Columbia Studios and he had a, a guest and it was business and it was very important. And I was boning a Dover Soul for him. Not back in this section, it was over by the fireplace. And I had everything set up on a jack stand. You have two supports here of the jack stand, and you have an oval tray 
So the fish goes on one piece of wood underneath for support. The plate goes on another. And you start working on the fish. It's very stable. Well, I was boning a sole for Gary Lieberthal one time. And, and I had a little bit of a cold. So I had a little, a little bit of a runny nose. So I'm trying to keep it all together, right? I want everything to look good. Suddenly, for no apparent reason at all, and against physical geometry, the whole jack stand of tray, this whole big oval of fish, flips up in this direction away from me. And the plate with the fish on it goes sailing up in the air in an arc. And the other plate goes flying off, and I stabilize the tray back down, and the fish comes down with a big splat right in the middle. I mean, it was really wow. a physically impossible yeah. maneuver. Yeah. But it was very similar to other times. And then, you know, I laughed because it was so damn funny and I knew it was impossible, though, you know, somebody observing wouldn't know it was impossible. And when I when when I and when I laughed, this big old bottle of snot flew out of my nose and right onto the fish with no oh. it. it was just like it was like out of a Chaplin movie. It was as wrong as it could be. Luckily the you know, they didn't notice other than their fish was ruined. They didn't see, you know, the snot. And um, we just got I stole fish from another table and nobody you know, have to wait for anything. This has happened with other things. Trace full of food, I'll stop back in the wait station holding this food, just going, come on guys, do I really need to clear all this? Again, I'm very stable. Suddenly, like a bowl of soup, which I have perfectly level, mind you, will slide off and roll down my arm and soak me with uh, chicken soup. Some, uh, another waitress who has another 35 years like I do will have a, gla a tray full of a glass of wine, and she'll be standing there, and one glass will just go ping and go for a flight off of it. Just stuff that really irritates us as food service professionals, but never harms anybody. Yeah, this is the closest wall that the restaurant itself has with the Montecito Inn. And I can't speak for the Montecito Inn, but I know I hear a lot of customers coming over complaining about noises in the night about what goes on there. I can't say anything about that because, you know, I work here and I live here. What I can say is the only time one of my staff ever saw Charlie, or what we call Charlie, was right here. It was before we opened as Lucky's when it was a Coast Village Grill, and we had a little ficus tree back in here. And if the tree was right here, what she saw was somebody in the chaplain get up with the bowler and the mustache and the splayed legs and, and the cane, yeah. like walking out and walking back. Or walking out and walking back. Walking out. And my waitress screamed out the door oh my God. and uh, into my arms. Uh, we were friends, of course. And I came back in, I didn't see anything, but you know, she, for the rest of the two years, she worked here. You guys may remember her, her name is Rachel Chapman. And uh, her nickname's Yummy. Hey, Yummy! Uh, Rachel would not work back in the section. Uh, it was quite I overheard somebody the other day uh, speaking in the restaurant, looking at all the photographs on the wall of the celebrities, and saying that this whole restaurant was like the dead speak to you. If, if only they know, I can't tell you how. But this kid just like sometimes gets in my bones. This is the house that Charlie built.